Hi there, and welcome to my Adobe After Effects Clone Mask tutorial, where I'll be showing you how to turn this into this. Now with all of Adobe apps, there are many different ways to do this, and through practice you'll be sure to find your own personal preference, but today I'm going to be showing you how to create a clone mask in the simplest way possible. Even if you've never touched After Effects before, this step-by-step -step tutorial will show you how to create your very own clone mask with ease. First up, you'll want to open After Effects and select New Project. Now you'll be looking at an empty project, so you're going to need some footage to mask. You can see any footage that's already been imported into the project in the side panel here. There's a number of ways to add footage to your project. You can click File, Import, double click on your project window here, or simply drag the video file into the project. Now you have your footage, you just need to drag it into the timeline. Because we'll be looping the footage, you might want to turn off the audio. All you need to do is click the speaker icon here. You can see that the footage I've chosen has been filmed with quite a wide aspect ratio. This is going to be too wide for what we need, so if you need to adjust the framing of your footage, just click on Composition, Composition Settings. In here, you can change a number of things about the composition, but all we need to worry about is the aspect ratio. As 1080 is the standard widescreen width, we're going to set it to that, but we don't want to change the height of the frame as the height is fine. To do this, make sure Lock Aspect Ratio is unchecked, Click on the width and type the size you want, in this case 1080. You'll see the frame is now thinner and it's cut off the sides of the image. This is totally fine as it'll actually help us with our clone mask. Now we need to choose what part of the footage we would like to use for the project. The footage I have is way too long so I'm going to use this section here. To pick the section you'd like to use, just move the playhead to the start of the section and press B for beginning. Then move the playhead to the end of the section and press N for end. To trim the whole composition to this section, hover over the grey bar above the area you just highlighted and right click on a PC or command click on a Mac and select Trim Comp to Work Area. Now the composition consists just of the footage you'd like to use. So now we've got a piece of footage, we need to start making the clone mask. First thing we need to do is duplicate the footage we have, so we have two layers of the same footage. To do this, simply select the layer you'd like to duplicate and press Ctrl D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. The new layer will now appear below the original. To create a clone mask effect, we'll need the footage to start at slightly delayed times. To do this, just click and drag the footage back along the timeline. It's important later to remember how delayed the footage is, so for mine it'll be 1 second and 12. If you now move the playhead along the timeline, you'll see the first skater appear. Once we reach the start of the second layer, he'll disappear. So here's where the fun starts. With the playhead at the start of the top layer, first you'll need to select the square mask tool from the toolbar and drag it over the area next to your image. You'll see your first skater reappear. The mask will basically cut the top layer, only showing what is inside the mask box, meaning you'll be able to see both layers at the same time. To be able to create the clone effect, you'll need to make this mask move across the image with the second skater. To do this, simply click on the expand arrow for the top layer with the mask on it. Then expand the mask itself so you can see all of its options. You can see here that all of the options have grey stopwatches next to them. Whenever you select a stopwatch it will light up and this will start to create what are called keyframes. Keyframes will basically allow you to control the properties of a layer mid-scene. The first option that you can see is mask path. Using this we can tell the mask to move across the image as time passes. The next step is a little bit tedious but it's also necessary. The simplest way to do this is to use the selecting tool. First make sure the mask is selected, then deselect the two left hand corners of the mask with shift click on a PC or command click on a Mac. You can then hold control on a PC or command on a Mac and use the arrow keys to scroll the playhead. If you just press down the arrow keys, this will move the two points of the mask that you've selected. So all you need to do is wait until the first skater is fully in the frame and begin expanding the mask along with the second skater. Make sure to keep an eye on things like arms crossing the mask so that they don't disappear. If you come across this problem, all you need to do is delay your video a little bit further down the timeline. You may notice that the video just ends suddenly. This is because the composition is only the length of the original section that you selected. To fix this, just go into composition settings and increase the duration. 10 seconds should be enough. Now, by using the slider at the bottom of the screen, you can zoom out to see the full composition. Because now the top layer runs past the length of the bottom layer, a black section will appear at the edge of the screen. Just move the playhead to where the black appears and continue to move the mask along so that it covers the black area. Once this is done, you will have successfully created your first clone mask. Woohoo! You're almost done, now onto the easy part. All you need to do is select the layer that you have with your mask on it and duplicate it. You'll then have two masked layers. 
Now is when you'll need to remember how much delay you put on the first video. Move the new layer back the same amount of time that you delayed the first video and then repeat. You'll now have four skaters coming on and then going off the screen. Well done. If you'd like to have them loop, it is simply a case of selecting a point on the footage where there are three skaters in the frame. Look around for a good indicator of which frame it is. You can use something like when the skateboard first comes off the floor and press B for beginning. Then move the playhead forwards until the fourth skater is in exactly the same position as the third skater was when you pressed B. Move the playhead back one frame and press N. Press space and there you have it, never ending skaters. Once you've had some practice, you can then start using manual masks. Using the pen tool, you can manually place the point for the mask. This allows you to cut very tight around each subject, making the distance between them smaller and creating a much more intricate effect. Finally, you'll want to export your video. If you want the footage to loop, simply go ahead and skip to the next step. You'll then need to edit the video together or play it back to back for it to seem like a never ending loop. If you want to export the whole clip, just move the playhead to the start, press B for beginning, move the playhead to the end, press N for end, and then move on to the next step. Once you've selected what you'd like to export from the composition, simply click File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. You'll see the export appear in the current render box. You can change the render settings by clicking on Best Settings. Here, you can select if you would like just the selected work area to be rendered or the full composition. All you need to do now is make sure it's on Best Quality and Work Area Only. Then, click on the blue text next to Output To and select where you would like to export the video to. Once you've chosen the output location, just click Render. And that's it! As I've said, there are many ways to do this and in time you'll find your own shortcuts and preferences. It is all about practice. I hope this tutorial helped and good luck with your clone masks.